all the lunacy that's going on in Washington. My big concern is the sanctity of the ballot box. Um, having spent the last 15 years in the Chicago area, <laughs> I have a number of uh, candidates I could relate to you at some point. But the truth of the matter is, SEIU, ACORN, and everybody else, my concern is how polluted are the voter rolls they created and how does it stop it? Well, that's a great question, and one I think we need to be vigilant on. And, and by the way, you mentioned ACORN. We, we, as House Republicans, have worked hard to try, to try to stop ACORN from getting funded. And there's a number of local chaps that, chapters that are closing down. But let me just put this on your radar screen. They are fighting back, and they are trying to regroup, reorganize, reconstitute, and, and, and come back in a different way, shape, or form. So we have to continue to watch that. And the SEIU is right in there complicit with them. Uh, and by the way, the Secretary of State just had a ruling that is outrageous, that some of you may have seen, with respect to not allowing people to, to, to switch, uh, which is just outrageous. Even her Democrat opponent, Lee Fisher, came out and criticized her. So uh, I think that will hurt her in, in her primary, by the way, and, and, and hopefully she'll lose. But we, we have to... Uh, get more people engaged in this, this election process. I'm very concerned about it. Uh, the power of, you know, one, of the, one of the things that, that you may have seen uh, with respect to being in the majority is the power of, the subpoena power of, of, of uh, Chairman of the House. Henry Waxman is using it in a very dangerous way, some of you may have seen, by, by calling out these companies, who by the way, warn us that they were going to have to make some tough choices if this bill passed. And, and you're going to see a number of employers put, put retirees into Medicare. You're going to see a number of employers put their employees into the government exchange. This isn't, this isn't a shock. Well, Harry Wax, Henry Waxman now is subpoenaing some of these companies that have become public, uh, dragging them before Congress, trying to intimidate them, which is outrageous. Well, you know what? We always play nice when, when we're in charge. And I can tell you that with respect to SEIU and ACORN and some of these other organizations, we, if we become a majority party, you will see us become more aggressive in the way these organizations are using government money. Why should I ever vote for a Republican again? Good question. Great question. Um, there obviously were a lot of things that went wrong. The Republicans erred or sinned. Um, and I believe that, that you could even say we lost our way. Part of that, let's, let's put it in, in some perspective. Part of that was, in looking back, um, a very uncertain time with respect to 9-11. Uh, here, here's what I mean by that. Repub if you look at charts, Republicans drug Bill Clinton to not cut spending, but reduce spending back in 1997. And we saw the, sur the first surplus in government spending in my lifetime. And that went on until September 11, 2001. Now, it went, the surplus started to go down. Um, back in 1999, after the transportation bill, Republicans were complicit. Then the recession hit, so, spent, so revenue went, went down. We saw the surplus. September 11th, that, I, I can tell you, I was there. It was, it was like I was in a dream. I didn't think in my lifetime that I would ever see the, the Pentagon burning from an attack. I saw it. There's an airplane sticking out of this building, and it was surreal. Running from the Capitol, because they thought at the time the Capitol was going to get hit by a plane, was surreal. So the days and months after, 
Nobody was thinking, well, how much is this going to cost? Because we didn't know what we were in. We had no idea. It was frightening, i got to tell you. And let me just tell you why some of this bashing against George Bush is uncalled for. And part of this is education. I think back, and it was so frustrating at the time. And maybe different decisions could have been made. But let me give you one example. The president had a report that because these are air, if anybody here travel? Airplanes? You, any, anybody travel? Well, think about it. Before September 11th, do you remember going through Port Columbus? Do you remember going through, the, I mean, we had security guards. Remember those security guards? Some of them couldn't even speak very good English. Remember that? They weren't getting paid too much. Well, one of the reports the president got back from a national security standpoint was, boy, we have a real problem with respect to security in our airports. And the, and the hijackers figured it out. And so he wanted to reform it, professionalize it, and create this Homeland Security Department. That asked me to take some money. So we passed the bill in the House. Well, guess what? We go to the Senate. Well, he doesn't have 60 votes in the Senate. So guess what the Democrats do? Some of you may not even remember this or, or forgot about it. They said, we're not going to move this bill unless the president allows these employees to be unionized. The president initially balked and said, I I'm just not going to do that. Well, guess what? The next thing we know, the president box because he wants this passed so bad to get this reform started and secure the airports he caves now, now we can go back and say he should have had a protracted fight he should have called him out on it we should have but he did and you know what we swallowed hard in the house and accepted it and it became law and today we have what we have and and by the way uh, it cost a heck of a lot a lot of money then and it's going to cost a lot of money for a long time so that's just one example of what the president had to do. Now, I, I said to the president one time that I thought that he should have showed more leadership in vetoing bills. And I'll give you an example of what I talked about. Not exactly popular in some parts of my district. The farm bill. I voted against the farm bill. We thought the president had the ability to really change the farm bill. And, and he could have vetoed it. In fact, three of us got into an argument with him. And he, and believe it or not, you're, you, you will be shocked when I throw this name out of you. He almost threw George Voinovich out of the office. <laughs> the president. And I, you know, I like President Bush. I like him a lot. And I think he's a good man and, and a good Christian guy. He was wrong on some of this stuff. But he was certainly wrong on the farm bill. And, and he could have provided leadership, and he, and he didn't. And, and there are examples of that. So you're right. We lost our way, particularly those four years. But remember, he had to negotiate with the Senate on almost everything. On the tax cuts, he had to negotiate with Senate Democrats. We passed a permanent permanent death tax expiration. We passed a permanent reduction in rates, a permanent abolition of the marriage penalty. All those things. You go over to the Senate, we'd have to compromise with the Democrats. We'd only do it for 10 years because they, could, they couldn't get to 60 votes. But you're right. Your overall premise is right. And, and so that's why I think it's important when, when, John, when John Boehner says, if we become a majority party, the Republicans are going to be different than the last Republican majority. Not just different than Nancy Pelosi majority, but different than, than this last Republican majority. And it starts with saying no to earmarks. And, and, and we are. Now there's a couple, couple Republicans that are breaking, and they say they're going to do earmarks. He can't. You know, he can't force them not to, but I think you're going to have 99 or 98 uh, percent no earmarks from, from Republicans. So, I don't disagree with your friends. I really don't.